Hey guys, I am Ken Ross here. I'm a business consultant that specializes in reducing costs for businesses by looking at their essential expenses. And today, I get to do something a little fun today. I'm going to tell you about my setup for this channel. Would love to explain it all. I've been doing this in what I call my business tech tips series where I've talked about OBS Studio and I've talked about using iMovie. I've talked about a lot of other things. I've even talked to you about setting up your own email forwarding and so you can check out that playlist it'll actually be on this side of the screen is it this side of the screen I think it's this side of the screen please check that out um, and follow up on all or catch up on all the other videos if you haven't but today I get to tell you a little bit about my setup and I'm gonna actually do that in two parts so the first part I'm going to talk about is when I'm shooting in the studio. So one of the most important parts of shooting any type of podcast or material where you have video is the quality of the image that you're displaying on, on to the viewer. And I use DSLR cameras. I specifically use Canon cameras. I actually have two of them, one for... Uh, in the studio and one when I'm out on the road and I can actually interchange them so the, the cool thing about using interchangeable DSLR cameras is that you can find a variety of different lenses for those cameras. You can use all different types of things uh, when it comes to producing content with a camera. Uh, the reason I also use a DSLR camera and specifically Canon in this particular case is because there are a lot of integrations to the computers or the different software that you're using that make this really easy to shoot. For instance, I'm using the out-of-the-box Canon software that you could get from the website to do some of the recording for these for these episodes. I, I literally just start a program it's on my computer. I hook my, my camera up to the computer itself and then that allows me to record not only the video but the audio and keep it in sync you know make sure that the image looks right manipulate certain things if I need to you know do some color correction I can actually do all the controlling of the camera from the computer I don't have to actually touch the camera and that's something I think is also really important right is that you have a consistent setup so I can use the same technology by the same manufacturer in in multiple places Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is OBS Studio specifically, and I, I've already touched on this a little bit, but I believe that this is kind of key to a studio setup. You have to have some way to be able to record yourself and record the screen if you're going to do any type of uh, screen recording like that. If you want some type of consistent feel of not only your studio image on your channel, but also when you're in Zoom or you're doing other things, OBS Studio really fills that gap. You can also use OBS Studio to actually do your recordings if, if you're so inclined. I like to use the out-of-the-box Canon software because I believe it's just a lot easier as far as the interface is concerned. There's not a whole lot of extra things I have to worry about. And when I'm actually filming stuff for this channel, primarily, it's just the studio shot and then some cutaways. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about specifically, and I talked about this a little bit already, is lenses. With DSLR, using DSLR cameras, there are lots of different lenses. And what that allows you to do is that it actually allows you to get many different types of shots. And in a studio environment, it's something that you desperately might need. You might want shots of, up close shots of certain products or items. If you're shooting um, for something that requires a lot of detail, having a lens that can pick up that detail and show that detail to the, the, the viewer is something that you definitely want. In addition to that, having good lenses gives you the, uh, the ability to have a much higher quality video. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is audio. It's really important that you have great sound production, that you can pick up voices and other nuances in, in your voice and what it is you're projecting because that translates to the audience. So I did some uh, research and when it comes to my studio, I actually use something that I can use on the road as well as in the studio and that's the Rode Wireless Go 2 system. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of details as to why I picked it or even a lot of details as to what some of the features are. I would actually direct you to some of the other creators that talk about these things, but the reason you want to have something as versatile as the road system is it allows you to 
add a wireless lock or <laughs> it's a wireless system that you can use and you can add certain things like a lavalier mic or um, keep some of your recording retain your recordings because a lot of times you'll be recording videos especially videos that are very important to you and you don't want to lose the sound that is being collected the road system gives you that and actually as an aside for this particular video I had to use the backup recordings that the Rode Wireless 2 system offers because my transmitter lost its battery in the middle of, of recording this so so much for <laughs> being prepared to film today but the other thing you should really invest in is a nice studio mic and the reason I say this is because if you're gonna do a lot of other teleconferencing or different types of things you'll wanna you'll wanna have a nice local mic that's that you can use to pick up and I actually I'll, I'll show you here this is the one I use um, extensively right now and I have to unhook it hang on this is the one I use right now but there are many other types and I know there are definitely some more popular brands ones that uh, actually cost a lot more than this one this one I just picked up at like a local Best Buy but even something as simple as having a micro a studio microphone that has a really big pickup on it and a, and a filter on the top I think that's what this is called is something that is worth investing in because the quality of your voice and the sounds that it picks up is something that your computer microphone can't pick up or the camera itself that you're using to record it can't pick up it's definitely worth looking into okay the next thing I want to talk about is lighting now in a studio environment it's certainly great to have consistent lighting and the only way you're gonna get a very nice image and a quality lighting environment is to actually invest in some professional lighting and set that up in such a way that your studio is consistent that you don't have to move the lights I use actually two very high-end professional lights that you use in like studio professional studios as well as stands that these lights stay on and the reason I do that is so that I don't actually have to move them at all. They're just part of the studio and environment. I don't have to um, change them every time I want to do something with them. I leave them where they are at. I, I turn them on when I use them, and I turn them off when I'm not using them. I even have a controller that I can use to control and adjust the level of brightness of the lights if I need to. That isn't something I necessarily have to do all the time or, or do all that often, but it's, it's certainly great to have the professional lighting that you see in a lot of studio productions it's not something that you necessarily need but you do need a good light and it does need to be consistent in order to produce good content okay, next up I'm going to talk a little bit about how I take some of this on the road now the first thing I want to make sure you understand is that when you're on the road there are a lot of other variables right the studio environment is pretty controlled once you have it set up it can be consistent you don't have to worry about a lot of different factors when you're on the road you have to really be able to adjust to the environment that you're in so I've already hinted on a few few of those things the first thing I, I want to make sure I talk about is specifically when it comes to on the road is having a, a reliable way to get audio and I already talked about the Rode Wireless 2 system it allows me to do that it allows me to also have different lavalier mics I actually have two different types of mics I have a very direct mic and I have a surround mic the reason I have those two types is that sometimes I'm interviewing multiple subjects and I don't have microphones for everybody and I don't want to do a handheld mic situation so I I wear a lav mic that that can ca capture the surrounding noise and the, um, the other voices that are in the room and allows me to be able to pick up those folks and not have a microphone for them that I can put in their face. Uh, that is also a reason for wanting to have many different solutions. No, so there are actually solutions that allow you to have a handheld mic and it allows you basically to take the Rode system, put that into a, a handheld and use that as a handheld mic and you can do interviews 
interviews that way too. It's not an option I'm using, but it's certainly an option for you if you're looking to invest in a way on the road to reliably record audio. The next thing you want to make sure you have when you're on the road is plenty of batteries or at least some way to keep the power of your system. Now, anything is bound to happen, right? I've had a lot of different things. I've had um, not, not enough memory on my card when I'm out on the road because I didn't check it, or I've had a very low battery situation where my battery is going to die and my, my camera is recording and then all of a sudden the recording stops. It's good to have at least two batteries and a charger that can charge both of those batteries. Uh, whether it's the same charger or separate ones, that's really something you have to you know figure out. It's also pretty ideal if you have the ability to do this or you have enough money to invest in it is a way to plug in your camera to the wall they, there's many different options out there uh, when it comes to powering your cameras if you have DSLR cameras um, that you can just put in a, a plug and that plugs into the wall and then you don't have to worry about having a power uh, battery I take two batteries every time and every time I go out on the road that's the first thing I'm looking for okay I have a, a full battery now it's charged I have a second battery. I'd love to put that battery somewhere where I can charge it or have it fully charged, um, ready to go, just in case something were to happen. Next thing I want to talk about is tripods. You have a very expensive camera or a very expensive phone or a very expensive GoPro for that matter. You don't want to just put that item on a on an unstable surface. You want to put that on a very nice tripod that can withstand, you know, conditions. If if you're out on the road and it's windy, um, you're certainly going to have problems with, you know, recording if it's windy, but you're also going to have, or like recording the audio if it's windy, but you're also going to have issues where if you're on a tripod that's unstable or you're using something that's not very stable, the wind could just blow over your camera. Invest in a decent tripod. I have a Manfrotto. It's a, a pretty old one, but it works for every camera now and into the future and it's definitely a worthwhile investment to find one of these or to have one of these and be able to set up your camera, set up in your audio and all that stuff right on that tripod, set it on a stable surface, get everything level in the shot just right the way you want it and that gives you um, the ability to, to not worry, right? If you have like a GoPro or some other lighter type of technology, find a stand that would actually work for that and, and keep it safe because you don't want to be in a situation where you're recording and the technology breaks because hey a wind gust or somebody bumps into it or it, it or it's unstable and it falls from somewhere that's not a situation you want to put yourself in okay another thing I want to talk about when it comes to setting up and having a great studio or a road setup is the technology that is that, that you use I happen to invest in two Apple computers one for producing content and doing all the editing, and the other one for doing some more of the administrative things when it comes to managing a YouTube channel and a business. I think it's very important that your studio setup be as consistent as you can make it so that there are very little changes to it so that you don't have to mess with it all the time and say, hey, look, now I'm in studio mode. Let's pull up the studio apps or do these things. That's going to cause more problems than not. Uh, one of the other things that I, I talk about this all the time or I talk about this um, to others about is making sure that you know the different applications and technologies that you're using and keeping a good catalog of those things. The reason I say that is you want to make sure that if you have ever want to upgrade your technology that you can easily identify, do these programs all work together? on this new new computer or on this new technology because you don't want to just upgrade your studio rig and, and your computer and your technology and not have all the tools that you're used to or have not evaluated the tools that you're going to need for that, that computer and not be able to use it. And then that slows down your production time. The last thing I want to talk about is something that isn't necessarily tangible. You can't just acquire this. It is a passion for wanting to do this. You want to be very stickler about what certain things look like, how they appear when they're set up. You want to be constantly looking at 
how you're recording things and how you look at things through the eyes of your viewer. When I started this channel, when I started doing these things, I was producing content and looking back at some of the content and saying to myself, can I improve it in some way? Can I convey my message better? Can I do something to give the audience more than what I'm giving them now? And that's something that you need to uh, always be evaluating. And that's a constant process. I know I've seen a lot of creators come from filming in their in their basement or filming in their bedroom to a full studio and they have a whole team of people. That isn't something that is just done overnight and that isn't something that's done by accident. It's done with a lot of intention and if you are into producing content online and you want to do a video or, or some type of, of recorded medium, you have to be thinking about that. You have to want to refine that and make sure that it's done correctly. Okay, guys, that's all I have for today. Thank you for your time. I know I could talk a lot about various different things, but I want what, to talk about what you would like to talk about. And so I need your comments in the, or I need your ideas in the comments section below on what are some topics that I can recover, that I can cover that are tech related. Please put that in the comments section below. I know I have a few more videos where I want to talk about certain aspects of my studio and my setup here, but I don't I don't believe that I'll have too many more things to say. I love to to show you and give you all the information that I can when it comes to creating content online and what it is that I'm using, but there are certainly various other things that you can do um, when it comes to tech related tips and I want to be able to give that to you so please put in the comment section what you would like to like to hear from me to talk about next also subscribe to this channel if you haven't tell your friends share this video and visit my website I'm Ken Ross .com, and until I see you next time I'll see you around